All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. The first story, Andrew Jack, the training partner of Larry Wheels, um, he announced recently that he was restarting his prep for his first show ever where he will be competing in classic physique. Um, he posted his first physique update in kind of a magic mirror of his own. And the caption says this is a raw, non-edited, non-filtered pick. Just 29 days, so about a month into his prep for this classic physique show. And he's still got 21 weeks to display a package on my debut on that very stage. We'll be coming in strong on that classic stage. So he is debuting in classic physique. He's never competed before. A lot of you guys are big fans of Andrew Jack. I get a lot of messages whenever he posts a physique update um, or says anything about competing. And to be fair, he does have a very impressive physique. And a physique, from what I can tell from the physique updates that he posts, looks very classic. I mean, it looks like he would be suited very well for the classic physique category. He almost has a little bit of a Breon Ainsley look to his physique. He's got a very small waist. His upper body's insane. Super round delts, super round arms. He's got decent legs. Pretty much everything you look for in classic physique. He's not a crazy mass monster. He kept his waist small. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what his posing is going to be like, but that is definitely a 2021 um, bodybuilding debut that I'm looking forward to uh, certainly seeing. I want to know what you guys think in the comment section below, though. How do you think he's going to place in his first competition ever, never competed before? And this is the first physique update that we've got at 21 weeks out, and for that far out from a show, he looks like he's in really good shape. So hopefully that translates into pretty good conditioning on the day of his show um, and maybe a pro card one day. He obviously is going to be competing as an amateur because he's never competed before. Who knows? Anything can happen. Now, next up in the news, Keon Pearson. Keon Pearson posted a pretty impressive transformation post um, on his Instagram today talking about his transition, of course, from classic physique to 212 where he'll be making his debut in a few weeks here at the Chicago Pro. And he answers the question that he apparently receives quite a bit. Why did I leave classic for people that still ask me? I'll leave this here. 29 pounds in 12 months. So 29 pounds of pretty much stage weight. He's in pretty good shape now. What is he, three weeks out from the Chicago Pro? Uh, maybe a little bit less than that. And uh, the picture in the beginning, um, I think, is the weekend of the Olympia. So I think he's like 209, close to 210 right now. And he's like one high 170s, like 178, 179 at the Olympia, something like that. So that's an insane transformation. 30 pounds of quality muscle in about a year's time during this transition from divisions. And I think it's going to really pay off for Keon. You can really see it everywhere. You can see it in his legs. You can see it in his upper body. Um, and you can still see really good conditioning. Obviously, the picture, um, the after picture, has much better lighting than the first one. But he almost looks like he's in better shape in the after picture. You can see more striations and vascularity in his shoulders, more vascularity in his forearms. Um, and that's with 29 extra pounds of muscle. Keon, in my opinion, has some of the best genetics in the IFBB of any category. I think he's been extremely impressive in Classic. He's shown that he's a hyper-responder. He does. He's done very well with putting size on to the structure and frame and genetics that he already has. And I think he is going to be super dangerous in 212. And I think he's going to win the Chicago Pro. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. How do you think he's going to fare at the Chicago show? And do you think he'll make it to the Olympia stage in 212? Now, next up in the news, let's talk about some Olympia wild cards here. First, I wanted to start with Antoine Vaillant, who just won the California Pro to qualify for the Olympia. And these are guys, these next couple guys I'm going to talk about are guys that people aren't really throwing in the conversation for top six or really top ten. Antoine Vaillant, very impressive showing at the Cali Pro. This is his most recent physique update at a little over 11 weeks out from the Olympia, a most muscular shot here. Um, he's got tremendous legs, tremendous shoulders. Um, this could be a guy that cracks the top 10. I don't necessarily see him in the top six, but I think Antoine could be a solid wild card at this year's Mr. Olympia um, that not a lot of people are talking about. Another guy that I think is kind of a wild card at the Olympia, Ian Vier. Ian Vier obviously just won the New York Pro. There was a lot of controversy around it as far as the fan response to that win. But Ian just posted a physique update as well at about 11 weeks out and some change, as he says in the caption, from the Olympia. 
and he's coming into the Olympia off a major pro win. The New York Pro is probably, you could say, the third biggest show in bodybuilding right now, and he won that show, whether it was controversial or not. Um, and he's a guy not a lot of people are talking about as far as a top six threat. Probably a threat to the top ten. Again, another guy I wouldn't necessarily say would be a threat to the top six. Um, but this is another wild card guy that if he comes in looking super grainy, super shredded, he could be amongst the top guys. I think if we're being honest with ourselves, the top guys, um, there's a cemented kind of top three. You've got to talk about Brandon. You've got to talk about Phil. You've got to talk about Flex, Dexter, Bonac. These top three, four spots, in my opinion, are kind of spoken for. You would be very, um, it'd be very hard to say Phil's going to be out of the top four. Brandon's going to be out of the top four. Flex is going to be out of the top four. Dexter's out of the top four. It'd be hard to say any of that. Um, so as far as the top, top guys, it's hard to say any of those guys won't be in the mix. But as far as the latter half of that top 10, I think that's any man's game. And some wild cards like Antoine, some wild cards um, like Ian. These are guys that are threatening those spots. Now, next up in the news, Callum Von Moger with another physique update um, ahead of his apparent return to the bodybuilding uh, classic physique stage. Now, Callum Von Moger in this physique update, it drew a lot of people's attention. I had a lot of people send this one to me because it appears um, he's got a new tattoo. And tattoos in bodybuilding have long been the subject of controversy. And it appears he's got maybe a half sleeve, almost a full sleeve tattoo on his arm. And the question that a lot of people were asking me is, do I think this will impact in a negative way his placings on stage? Now, traditionally, tattoos aren't the best idea if you're going to be a professional bodybuilder. Large tattoos specifically, smaller tattoos, um, forearm tattoos, calf tattoos, stuff like that, not necessarily the biggest deal. But when you're talking about a tattoo that covers up a major muscle group, and multiple muscle groups at that, a sleeve or a half sleeve is covering up your entire tricep, your entire bicep, your shoulders, your forearm. That's covering an entire muscle group, and that's where I think it starts to become a little bit of an issue. You have not seen a Mr. Olympia winner in men's open, in classic, in 212, with a full sleeve on their arm. You haven't seen it. You've maybe had some Mr. Olympias in the mix with a small tattoo. Dorian Yates had like a small forearm tattoo uh, but nothing major. So do I think it'll impact Callum negatively? Not necessarily. Do I think it was the best idea? Not necessarily. Does it really matter what I think? Not necessarily. He's still going to compete, and he's still probably going to do well. But let me know what you guys think, again, in the comment section below, your honest opinions about tattoos in bodybuilding. Now, the final story that I have for you guys today, if you guys have been living under a rock, Big Rami just announced that he will be competing on October 11th. Of course, the Europa Spain is on October 11th. So Big Rami is, in fact, about two weeks out from his return to the bodybuilding stage following his appearance at the 2020 Arnold Classic, where he missed his qualification for the 2020 Mr. Olympia. Of course, Big Rami sat out the 2019 Mr. Olympia, and it wasn't his plan to sit out the 2020 Mr. Olympia, so... I'm sure it was a very disappointing blow for him to not qualify at the Arnold Classic. So now he has officially announced he will be trying to qualify on that uh, Europa Spain show, hopefully off of a win and not just the top three placing. And now it is officially official. They are putting Big Rami on their little promotional posters um, for the Europa Spain. In his video, he just said he's competing on October 11th. He didn't say the words Europa Spain, but now on the Europa Spain page, they're posting his image on their poster, so it looks like it's pretty official that he is doing Spain now. Now, in my mind, this show is going to be like a mini Olympia. The guys in this show are fantastic. Raphael Brandau, Regan Grimes, James Hollingshead, Milan Sadek, Big Romney, Lucas Osadil, these names are good names. These bodybuilders are good bodybuilders. And you've got other relative mass monsters in this lineup. James Hollingshead. Look at James, for example. He's got a ton of muscle on his physique. No, he's not as big as Big Rami, but he's got a ton of muscle on his frame. And from what we've seen from his Europa Spain prep updates, he looks like he's bringing the conditioning. He's bringing that granite hard, grainy look to his physique with that size, something that Rami has had a lot of trouble replicating. And what, what a show it would be, or what a turn of events it would be, if Rami lost the Spain show, 
and a guy like James beat him on conditioning. A guy like uh, Regan beat him on conditioning. A guy like Raphael beat him on structure and conditioning. That would be an interesting twist going into the Olympia. And like I said, the, I've said this a thousand times probably, but the top three in Spain all qualify for the Olympia. Here's the real question. If Big Rami didn't win this show and he was second or third, do you think he would bother going to the Olympia without being able to win a show going into it? That is the question on my mind. Now, I'm not saying Big Rami's not going to win this show. On paper, Big Rami is a sure win for this show. On paper, he's the best bodybuilder in this lineup because on paper, he's a runner-up at the Olympia. On paper, he's won more pro shows than any of these other guys. On paper, I believe he's been competing longer than any of these other guys, with the exception of maybe Lucas Osledil. On paper, he's physically bigger than every guy in this lineup from a body weight standpoint. So on paper, Big Rami has to win this show. So I'd be extremely surprised if he didn't, and I'd be very surprised if he was outside of the top three and didn't even qualify. So it's going to be an interesting one. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below, your Europa Spain predictions. As always, please give this video a thumbs up if you did, in fact, enjoy it. Please subscribe to this channel if you have not subscribed yet already. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. And as always, Nick Strength and Power, signing out.